All right. Uh, you'll want to take uh, this week's quiz quickly. There's only one answer, and it's true. That's my uh, end of the semester gift, if you like. Now, as I noted, I changed a couple books this semester, and one was the uh, can't remember the title of it right now, I think the island, um, and decided on a different kind of uh, dystopian uh, look on, uh, in, in adolescent fiction. And this is one carried much farther uh, from even the beginnings of the first book we read, that is to say, um, like Shipbreaker and uh, Matched, uh, we're having a world that's basically a little bit post-apocalyptic. Um, one is that, uh, that, that civilization, uh, as uh, we knew it before, uh, is challenged. And I mean, we look at the village that the uh, Cassie lives in, and it's very nice. Uh, in other words, uh, there has been a survival. People have survived the uh, apocalyptic event. Um, and uh, in Shipbreaker, uh, many um, do quite well. Um, that is to say, usually the the one percent that we talk about today. Um, now, all all uh, zombie narratives uh, since the '68 and George Romero's Night of the Living Dead are all, in general, unless you have comedies, uh, there. But there is the threat of apocalypse because uh, you know if it, in, in, uh, we learn in uh, the sequel, one of the two sequels to uh, The Force of Hands and Feet, that, you know, we had billions of people and that become zombies. Um, in other words, civilization, basically, as we know it, has lost in this particular story, which we find Mary, um, our main character, uh, living in a uh, confined area uh, deep in the forest, uh, protected by a uh, fence. Uh, the rest of the world, uh, the zombies have won. Uh, and there's maybe, uh, they don't know where the isolated packets are. Her mother talks about ocean. And as a matter of fact, the mother's final words to Mary have to do with the story of the ocean, this legendary place where we're seven generations or so into the future. Um, we learn, in particular in the third book, when they go to the dark city, um, that we're in New York City at that particular point. Uh, right now, we just don't know where we are. Um, but the idea is, is that planted into Mary's head by her mother is that the you go to the ocean. Um, the, the picture of it's been burned, I think. Uh, it's a legendary place, um, but it's a goal, uh, if you will. It's a goal. Um, and uh, I don't know if you remember if, if you find out in the end when she does uh, reach there, um, rescued or almost put to death by the the uh, lighthouse uh, person. Mary um, arrives in Vista is the name of the place, and the second novel uh, picks up there. Although Mary will go back um, to where we start. Uh, to see what happens has happened to her brother Jed and, and Cassie and um, uh, Jacob, whom they've uh, basically adopted within this new blended family, if you will. Uh, family structures break down quickly in a lot of these novels. They're very popular. Um, zombie novels, of course, are more and more, but the whole apocalyptic thing, as we've seen, especially since 9-11, um, with the advent of the Peter Boyle's fast zombies and all these other kinds of things, the, the zombie has become um, a meaning machine. Um, and they, they, a lot of them have a great political context. If you watch George Romero's movies, I happen to um, study zombies a lot. Uh, and uh, at any rate, uh, this, this series for adolescents is one of the good ones. There's a, there's a proliferation of these uh, books, uh, the zombie stories are, have a lot of connections with the Gothic, um, uh, and um, Mary herself uh, is, um, as some has argued, a very much of a kind of the Gothic girl who's waiting 
um, a la Twilight, uh, for the guy to, to rescue her. Um, and, and, and a lot of the novel is about being uh, Harry loves her, and uh, Travis is, is the love of her life, who's betrothed through to her best friend Cass. And then, you know, so you have your love triangle uh, going on here that dominates. But for a lot of it, that's what she thinks about uh, Travis and Harry and all these other things. And, um, and but then she has to decide. Um, and uh, the other kinds of things to think about here is let's is zombies are for me fascinating uh, metaphors. Um, the zombie um, is a liminal figure. Now, that is to say, it's you know right between spaces, the dead, or is it the undead? I mean, they are both these things at once. A teenager is liminal as well, the adolescent character. And in this place, the woman, our main character, Mary, tells the story, and is caught between adolescence and the frightening world of adulthood. And so the zombie narrative, the apocalyptic narrative, we see there are similarities here. Um, and uh, and the, especially these new or the Hunger Games, for instance, uh, matched um, is, uh, I'm trying to remember the one about uh, Maze Runner, um, these particularly violent uh, stories, and especially the zombie story. I mean, the zombies are frightening. And they, 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 they offer a good platform for the adolescent caught up in this um, transition into a very, very unfamiliar and, and, and in fact, frightening kind of uh, world, uh, the world of uh, becoming an adult. And, uh, and, and so you have a lot of these characters who will do everything they can to remain uh, protected uh, and in the adolescent world. And this world is compounded by the fact that uh, families disintegrate. Uh, in, the, in the beginning of the novel, we have Mary that's talking with Harry, uh, and he's going to ask her to the, to the harvest ceremony, which is where you're betrothed. Um, and they have a whole system set up here. Um, and it's at this time that uh, we learn that her father um, was bitten, uh, has turned into a zombie, her mother is completely undone. Um, and again, there's uh, the sense of mother cares more about the love for her husband than she does for her own children. Um, Jed is her brother, um, and uh, she just uh, is lost without the husband. And to the point where Jed tells her, you, you gotta, you got to stay uh, and guard your mother. Uh, and of course, she's uh, holding hands with Harry, um, and... Uh, I think at that point uh, she doesn't get home in time, and her mother, in fact, uh, goes too close to the fence and is just drawn to this, drawn to it, and uh, um, the husband and chooses, uh, um, and chooses death. I just wanted to read the part from it, um, and this is from the beginning of the book. I look to the forest, to the fence, and I wonder about my mother and father. This is after the mother. In their life, is their life any easier now? Is there fear in the unconsecrated? Uh, is there loss and love and pain and longing? Wouldn't a life without so much agony be easier? And this is, uh, you know, uh, um, the kind of... Uh, giving in, I mean, is it, uh, to uh, not fight, to just surrender, and one of the ways to be would just become a zombie. Um, and she's thinking about this. I mean, her father has just told her to go. Uh, uh, he won't help her. Uh, he's angry, blames her for the mother's loss. And remember that uh, Mary, uh, you know, the decision is you should die a quick death or um, become a zombie. And uh, Mary lets the mother, ha uh, you know, gives the mother the in themselves, let her let her go into the, into the woods, into the forest to be with her husband. Who knows? And there is this thing: is that, that do you give in? Do you give in? Uh, do you surrender? And Mary will choose um, the way of going to the ocean, which was this uh, hopelessly hopeful. Um, 
uh, idea, perhaps, that there's sanctuary there. Um, and there will be, in a sense, but the world is a dangerous place with billions of zombies floating around. Um, now, you learn in the other ones why and how these various villages uh, were created. Um, another uh, inca important character to watch out for is, is uh, in fact, Mary's double. Um, the um, Gabrielle. Mary will be sent, you know, to become um, to the, she's going to go to the cathedral with the sisterhood um, and there it was with uh, Sister Tabitha basically takes her down in there and, you know, into the bowels of what used to be a, a, a winery. Um, it isn't the old antiquated castle that you find in, in the Gothic novels because the United States isn't that old, uh, but it serves that purpose and it's, people live in it. It's not an abandoned castle, but she goes to, finds that place where there's a fenced in area with a door and basically tells Mary, you have a choice. You don't have to become um, a member of the sisterhood, but the other side is that there's always the threat that we're going to send you out uh, into the forest. Uh, and so these are the sort of forced choices. Now, um, again, um, the sisterhood, you've come to find out that uh, you know, a lot of these villages were um, specific groups that would go to different villages that were connected with this as a way to hope to survive by not putting everybody in one place. And here there was a monastery of some kind with nuns uh, where Gabrielle came from, where they end up at uh, number 18. Um, sorry, I forget my, 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 my Roman numerals, um, which had recently been uh, destroyed, may well have been populated by scientists. We don't know. It's many generations later. Gabrielle shows up, and and uh, and and, uh, and uh, Mary sees her in the window, and you have this classic doubling. Um, they're closely aligned, Gabrielle and Mary. Uh, Gabrielle has come. Um, and uh, they look at each other, and she wears bright red, which, you know, with vividness and everything like this. Um, and, of course, uh, Gabrielle's fascinated because someone has come from the other side, and from, from the fence of them. You know, there's the paths that are protected. Uh, no one's allowed to go there. Um, her brother, G uh, Travis and Jed, uh, are the people who work to make sure the fences are, uh, are in good repair. Well, Gabrielle, at the red comes from the outside. The nuns kill her. Um, and they don't do it, they, if you do it, by the way, in isolation, um, that is to say, um, when the zombie is created, uh, if, they're, if they're done in isolation, they become one of the fast ones. They're, uh, and they, they die out quickly. Um, but Gabrielle's gonna be running around, you can see the red, uh, and, and, and then, of course, uh, Mary identifies with her. She comes from where Mary's mother has told her to go, Ocean. She doesn't know for sure, just has this number um, that she discovers. And at this particular point, too, uh, Travis is being brutally injured, um, and this is where the love interest develops, but he's betrothed to Cass, uh, and, you know, the whole thing... Um, moves in that, that kind of predictable direction of, of the love triangle. Um, but it, 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 does, it does tweak it in interesting ways. Now, one of the other things you realize is that uh, the sisterhood is there to protect itself. Um, that uh, the, what Gabrielle you know, realized pretty quickly is, is uh, uh, turned into a, a, a zombie in isolation. That means she's going to burn out much quicker. Um, the fast ones do, um, because the sisterhood wants to protect its secrets. And the the way that you control, that you keep everybody under wraps, uh, we've seen this before, and keeping people in ignorance, um, you know, like Todd in, in the one you just read, Todd. Um, doesn't know about women and doesn't know, you know, what's going on and it's experienced and teaches them and Mary's going to have that very much in that way too. Uh, when Gabrielle manages to break through, I mean, they, they practice this all the time. The nuns have to have 
the security, the sisterhood of the security of the sisterhood, um, is a reason for their being. Uh, they just like the, uh, you know, the lies that, that uh, are put out in the very first book that we have to shroud the secret of the war. Um, you don't believe what you're raised to believe. I mean, I mean you are inculcated. Well, Mary's um, different from that. Uh, she is a bit of a rebel. Um, she does seem passive in some ways with respect, of course, to uh, her love for Travis and these, but she chooses not to become a zombie, but, but uh, she chooses the route of the uncertain into adulthood and goes away. Uh, and she leaves with uh, Jed and Cass and uh, Harry um, and Travis, of course, and they are going to get the, through their, their misadventures or adventures, they end up uh, in where Gabrielle was probably from, uh, recently overrun uh, by zombies, bearing tree houses, so they're separate from the zombies for the time being, until poor Jacob does something. I don't to get into it all, but uh, you know, I mean, uh, it's uh, there. That you know, the, the the other things of the family and the band of him. They find a baby zombie that she throws out the window, and she thinks that maybe she and Travis can be together. Um, but that's taken away from her as well. And she's gonna Harry and Cass and whatnot. They're gonna stay. Um, Mary will in the second book where she's not the lead character, the adult Mary will go back to find them, uh, guilt over abandoning them, but she will go on after Travis, uh, in fact, sacrifices his life for her. Um, and she will get to Ocean, but she'll be there by herself. Um, so, the, the, you know, the, the violence of it is uh, uh, all the zombies and not the unconsecrated, they call them, or the mudos. Um, uh, represent uh, in the horror and the terror ways uh, that allow adolescents to confront their own um, conflicts. Um, I think that my friend Kyle Bishop... Uh, close to the page back um, that I wanted to read. Yeah, just uh, what Ryan leaves notably absent from her vision of the apocalypse is any return of Jesus Christ or the promise of a divine last judgment. Instead, she presents an organized religion, and it is very much like in The Handmaid's Tale, um, an organized religion in a decidedly negative light. If where Mary's village is ruled by a secretive group of nuns who conceal any knowledge of the past in the confines of the village's inaccessible cathedral. Although the structure was once a house of worship, the antiquated and decidedly Gothic monument houses nuns who are hardly servants of Christ, as Ryan's readers would understand them. Mary gives no indication she is a particularly religious, religious person. I'm going to see now if, if uh, it got dropped when I was reading to you. Um, furthermore, at no point does anyone in the novel discuss his Jesus, um, the atonement, salvation, or the concept of heaven. I mean, this would be your happy ending. Yet Ryan does indicate her novel address the idea of a new Jerusalem. Uh, that is to say, uh, the hope of a better place exists somewhere in the aftermath of mass destruction and suffering. The first sentence of the force in the hands of feet establishes this ideal, the ocean, a place that represents both Mary's past and foreshadows her hope for a future. This legendary place, this nostalgic utopian ideal, ult intimately associated with her own mother, becomes Mary's goal a place she irrationally believes will offer her safety and uh, freedom. Um, she, to a degree, uh, she's right, uh, but uh, it's not the, um, the beautiful place she would hope for. And I, asked, I said something about the liminal figures. Um, uh, in here, I want to just read this little bit. Uh, 
Zombies are thus essentially liminal creatures, dead yet somehow alive, human yet unequivocally monsters, who have lost their consciousness and autonomy in favor of an all-consuming and instinctive drive, a drive that results in a kind of mind and monstrous kind of a hive mind and monstrous community. This community almost always proves irresistible as zombie narratives invariably move from initial infection to massive proliferation to the eventual collapse of society's uh, infrastructure. And again, as I said, there's the relationship that mother really has there, this, and, and, and the teenagers are also liminal figures, um, caught, if you will, between a certain security, if you will, of adolescence and the choices that need to be taken to become a mature adult. And uh, that those are uncertain. And, and in Mary's case, you follow her and see that she um, initially seems just your typical um, passive um, female character who awaits the males, that she has some of, of uh, Katniss in her, if you will. Um, uh, she's very human. Um, but I want you to see that the zombies are not there just to raise terror. Um, they have an integral part to play in the story, um, and uh, and uh, and Mary uh, will fight to survive. Uh, but this is this is not a nice world, <laughs> and people get hurt, uh, and people die, um, and uh, you can't change a lot of those things. Um, Dead Mother Travis, The Turning, uh, let me see, uh, and I guess I'm seeing liminal, yeah, I just wrote some things down here um, that I wanted to make sure that I, I mentioned to you, uh, just uh, to lay a foundation for the story, um, and, and then you follow it as you will go along. Um, but it is a, it is a story uh, here, um, very much uh, in the grain of a lot of the other first-person accounts and whatnot that you've read of a, um, a novel of transition. Uh, and, and you'll find this is a commonplace for most uh, adolescent novels who follow um, uh, pretty much, you know, uh, the same kind of patterns. A lot of them where you have a dominant adolescent perspective in YA a young protagonist who is allowed to solve problems and succeed in his, on his or her own. Um, Fast-paced plotting, uh, works that cross generic lines, and certainly do we have all kinds of mixtures of different genres here. Um, optimistic resolution accomplished by an adolescent protagonist who successfully transitioned in adulthood, and an exploration of emotions and psychological states that resonate with a teenage audience. Um, and so in this way, you remember that Jeffrey Cohen has uh, uh, written a lot about this. Uh, the word monster and the zombies are good monsters. They are monsters. Uh, they are flexible. Um, and uh, the root of the word monster is to show. And so a lot of the times what happens in these kinds of stories is the zombies are there. Um, they, they're they're just driven by compulsion um, to kill. Um, they don't have any plans, um, but invariably the interaction between the zombies and the characters shows us something about what it means to be human, among other things. Um, and this one is going to show, uh, in the end, the, the dead-end quality, if you will, of where Mary lives, and they're not really doing much more than base survival and living um, in a world that's organized, but uh, it has a certain deadness about it already. Um, so enjoy it, uh, and uh, as I said, take the quiz right away, uh, and do your discussion thread, yes.